Hey fam, it is your girl, the one and the only spicy, and I'm back today with another pick a card reading. I hope that you all are doing well. I hope that you all are feeling blessed and that you are enjoying your week. I feel well, I feel blessed, and I'm definitely excited and grateful to be here doing another reading for you all today. So if you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, I would like to give you all a special welcome back. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and click that button and join the fam today because I promise that you will love it here. And also make sure you check out the links in the description box as well. So the question that we are asking Spirit today, as you have already seen in the thumbnail, is what type of lover are they? So the person on your mind, maybe you're curious to know like what type of lover are they? You know, maybe this is someone that you're just meeting someone that you are wanting to reconnect with, or I don't know, <laughs> okay? It's so many different types of situationships and relationships and connections out here. So you just want a better idea of what type of lover are they, or maybe this is someone that you're already involved with and you just want some more information to help explain their behavior and just how they are in relationships. So let's get into it. If you are new here and you haven't really done a pick a card reading before, essentially what you're going to do is pause the video right now if you need to and take a look at the three different pile options that you have in front of you. So for pile one, we have the Ethereal Visions Luna Edition Tarot deck with the Amethyst Crystal. For pile two, we have the Modern Witch Tarot with the Green Fluoride Crystal. And then for pile three, we have the Final Rose Tarot with the Citrine Crystal. So pause the video right now if you need to take a look at the three different pile options. And then you're going to go to the description box, scroll down to the timestamps and click the timestamp that correlates with the pile or the piles that you have chosen. And I will see you at your reading. All right, my pile one people, if you chose the Ethereal Visions Luna Edition Tarot deck with the Amethyst Crystal, I'm going to go ahead and get started with your reading for today. But of course, if you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, I would like to give you all a special welcome back. Shout out to all of my lovely returning subscribers. I just want to continue to express my gratitude for just all of your engagement. I really don't take your time, energy, and attention lightly. So I just appreciate you all deciding to spend that here with me. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to remain consistent and keep posting readings that you all enjoy. So I just want to thank y'all for being here. If y'all have not subscribed, if it's some of y'all that have just been viewing, you haven't yet subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. I would encourage you to just go ahead and join the fam today. And also make sure you check out the links in the description box as well. Now there are multiple links in the description box as far as the other things that I'm doing around the web. So I would say definitely check it out. But also there's different ways in which you can support this channel as well. If you're not able to donate to this channel, then the best thing you can do is to subscribe because it does help to push my channel and my readings even further into the algorithm. And the whole purpose is to impact as many people as possible. So I would definitely say subscribe and even share the videos if you feel compelled. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started, y'all. Pile one, we're asking spirit today, what type of lover are they? They being the specific person on your mind, okay? What type of lover are they? So let's go ahead and get into it, y'all, because I actually have, I have like five Oracle decks I'm going to be getting some additional information from, and y'all know that I am a yapper. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go, pile one. The person on your mind, what type of lover are they? All right, so we have the Knight of Pentacles that came out. Y'all, I'm gonna be honest, sometimes the Knight of Pentacles, <laughs> sometimes the Knight of Pentacles annoys me. Like sometimes it annoys me in relationship readings. Because it's such a slow moving energy. It's so slow. So if you are someone who can get like really impatient, like <laughs> if you're someone who can't hold your horses, then okay, that might pose some of an issue. But the Knight of Pentacles genuinely in relationship readings is not necessarily bad. You know, this is someone who at times can definitely be a bit stubborn 
because they feel as though their way is the best way. But, you know, this is someone who can be very slow and meticulous. The Knight of Pentacles can also be someone who is very skilled and capable. You know, someone who is not quick to jump all in, to be so impulsive, but someone who also values commitment as well and loyalty. It just comes in due season. It comes in due time. So, you know, the person that is on your mind they can be very slow, okay? <laughs> very slow and maybe even at times cautious, like a cautious type of lover, someone who wants to cross their T's and dot their I's. We even have here with the Two of Cups. So I'm saying, like, <laughs> if you are an impatient person, then okay, you know, you have to hold your horses or would have to take some communication with this person just so you know, they understand where you are emotionally, but in relationship readings, it's not necessarily a bad thing. We also have here with the two of cups. So this is a person who actually wants to inspire connection and connectivity between the both of you. Like this is that type of person, you know, they could be a very reciprocal individual. They could be someone who just, loves to be in that like you know honeymoon phase where it's like you're getting to know someone you know they could just be a real excited and enthusiastic person within that phase and it's not necessarily bad because this person can back up their actions with you know even what they're telling you within this honeymoon phase or the things that you all are experiencing like there's actual proof like this person is a responsible individual so they're going to show you the proof of what it is that they're saying. So it's not necessarily, you know, it's, it's good. It's good. Like the person that you have on your mind, they're, you know, they're good. <laughs> We're going to keep getting some more information about what type of lover that they are. But yeah, this person, this, this person is actually a good person. Like when it comes down to relationships, like this is good. We even have here with the Ace of Pentacles. Let me get some more information and then I'm going to pick it up. Okay, we have the Ace of Wands. Yeah, so there's that enthusiasm and excitement and passion um, that I'm talking about. So I like this person because I feel like this individual is, is just a very giving person as well. So they could just be very generous, a very generous lover. Someone who sees themselves as wanting to be more so, a, more so of an asset in your life as opposed to a liability. So this is the person that is going to be willing to give you something and they want to give you something substantial. They want to give you something that makes you feel stable and something that makes you feel secure. Like this is that reciprocal energy type of person. This isn't the individual that feels like they can get nothing for something. This is the type of person that realizes that in order to get what they want out of a relationship, in order for it to be a mutually beneficial relationship, they understand that they have to give, okay? They must invest. So this is nice. It's nice. And even here with the Ace of Wands, yeah, like <laughs> this is a very passionate type of lover, okay? So I'm not even surprised. There could be a lot of mutual, you know, sexual attraction or even compatibility here between the both of you. And I'm also picking up like this person is very compassionate as well. Very compassionate lover. We have the emperor. Okay, so this is a very mature lover. Okay, this is someone who is going to be assertive. This is someone who is going to go after what it is that they want. And there's no questions about it. You know, this is someone who has a great deal of strength. And the maturity comes from just their ability to, I want to say, just to remain in control. So this isn't the type of person that is going to be prone to emotional outbursts. Like this is someone who it could be very emotionally stoic. And oftentimes people may see that as, oh, this person is being detached. But I think that it's a lot safer to be with someone who is like that as opposed to someone who is always flying off the handle or you know, when they experience these bursts of passion and enthusiasm and excitement towards you, it's like they don't really know how to channel that energy. 
they don't really know how to organize that energy. They don't know how to unpack it so that it makes sense for the connection and they're not being too forceful. So yeah, this is a type of mature lover. You know, this is someone who is also a protector. So even with the Ace of Pentacles, I didn't see the King of Pentacles, but even with the Ace of Pentacles, it makes me think about someone who is a provider as well. Someone who is a protector and provider. And this is also someone who is willing to structure and organize the relationship so oftentimes when we're in the two of cups energy it can get pretty chaotic okay it can get pretty chaotic because there's emotions flying everywhere okay what i heard was flying off the handle so there's emotions everywhere there's like a i like you you like me we like each other okay but it's a lot going on but we just met each other but there's chemistry here like we got to explore compatibility like it can be very uncertain and oftentimes that uncertain can lead that uncertainty can lead into chaos and conflict if it's not properly attended to or if it's not organized or if there's no foundation if it doesn't make sense you know so this is that type of person that wants to make sense of their own feelings and they want to make sense of any type of relationship and connections that they actually do have with other people so I think that your connection with them is going to make sense because that's how they are. But yeah, there's, you know, this is someone who could also be just in general, like very attractive as well. <laughs> you know, they're a very attractive individual. But yeah, this is someone who values those deep emotional bonds and connections. They value that. So it's like, if this is someone that you just met, they're going to value the time that they're actually spending with you and they're going to want it to be mutually beneficial for everyone, like I said. We also have here with the Page of Wands. Yeah, this is someone who is willing to explore. So I guess they're an adventurous and explorative type of lover. So this is someone who is willing to explore the connection. It's like if they have strong feelings about someone, they're going to pursue it and it doesn't matter. It's not like they're going to be dealing with a sense of fear like, oh, well, you know, I feel this type of way, so I'm just going to back off. It's like, no, when this person feels drawn, they're going to explore it. This is someone who doesn't have issues with taking new opportunities and kind of being even a risk taker because that's how they feel. So they're going to pursue how they feel. It just is what it is, but they do it in a very mature way. Like this isn't a stupid person. This is a very intellectual, intelligent individual, <laughs> you know? And I think this is someone who also values their own personal time and energy. They have a lot of self-respect. So if they're choosing to explore something with you, it's literally because, okay, that's what they're choosing to do, but it's not like this person is like codependent. It's not like this is something they have to do, you know? But if it's something that they want to do and they're compelled to do it, then they will. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, this is an adventurous type of lover. This is someone who is willing to explore the possibilities. And I feel like they also, with their passion, their passion pushes them to think about just a lot of different options, you know, for things that you could do with them, things that you could do together. So this person seems to be very ambitious. They're a very hardworking person. So like I said, they're going to invest in the, into the connection. It, it, it might take time. But hey, <laughs> it might take time, but this is someone who is more so relationship minded, like they're relationship based. Like this isn't someone who is just up and for the streets. Like they have a lot of feelings and those feelings have to be directed somewhere. <laughs> they have to be directed somewhere and it has to make sense. So this person kind of gives me like, Sagittarius type of energy because it's like it's all about adventure and exploration and expansion and growth and I just feel like this this is where this person is when it comes to love like they want to expand the love they want to grow the love they want to see where it could go they're like ready for the journey like this is someone who's actually ready to love so let's see what else Let's see what else. I want to move on. Oh, even here on the bottom of the deck here, we have the six of pentacles. So yeah, this is a generous lover. This is a generous lover. Like, cause pretty much like they typically tend to be blessings. And like I said, an asset 
to any connection to any relationship like that's who they are it's like this is someone who is generous as well like they're going to be willing to give you things whether that's to give you just support in general you know because there's a mutual reciproc reciprocation aspect to the six of pentacles it's like they're going to be willing to do what needs to be done to you know even ensure your happiness but also with the expectation that you are able to do the same thing for them as well because it has to be mutually beneficial but yeah this is someone who is very generous like they're a giver this is someone who is going to give love because that's what they want to do and also even there with the ace of pentacles like they could want to give you money resources and also gifts as well to show you know their appreciation for you to show that they love you to show that they care about you it's like that's what they're going to be willing to do and it seems like this person is capable of doing that so they could be you know financially well off or they're just a hard working person they're diligent this is someone who keeps a job so it's like even if they're not a millionaire <laughs> even if they're not a millionaire or multi-millionaire like they do have money or they know how to make money they can rely on themselves. This could also be someone who has a very strong entrepreneurial spirit as well, like a business owner, you know, someone who is um, maybe even a CEO of a company or just in a high management position if they're employed under someone else. So yeah, and then we also have the three of swords within the reverse. So this is definitely someone who is healing, okay? They're definitely in a healing process at this point in time in their life, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I think that we're all healing. So it's nice that this individual is able to, you know, look past what they have experienced in their past and they're putting their best foot forward. So, yeah, this is the type of person who's going to put their best foot forward. That's the type of lover that they are. They're actually going to try. Like if this is what they say they want, they're going to try. They're going to show up. That's what they're going to do. So I think that this person wasn't always like this. I feel like this individual at certain points in their life had issues with decisions. Okay. They had issues with decisions or feeling like if they chose something that it would potentially be a mistake. This is someone who has been there, but I feel like they are someone who is a fearless lover, someone who's overcoming the aspect of fear because they don't want to be held back. They want to explore. They want to expand. And that's just what it is. I feel like at a certain point in time in life, they could have like had a player type of energy and attitude. Okay. But the player definitely got burned <laughs> somewhere here in the process. So I think that this is someone who is changing their ways. Like there's someone who is reformed and they realize that if they don't want to experience loss, then the best thing for them to do is to do things in a different way. Okay. So I feel like they've experienced some loss here. It's been loss of connections. I also feel like they've chose wrong. So they've chosen the wrong types of people. So they're just not trying to do that anymore at this point in time. Like this person is not trying to experience even more regret or what ifs, you know, like what if, you know how some people are where it's just like, they just have mad regrets in life. Like, what if I did this or what would have been the cause of that or what would have been the conclusion or the outcome? Like, it's just a lot of questions. And I just feel like this person at this point in time, they don't want to be a regretful lover. They want to be someone who's fearless and someone who gets the most out of their dating relationships. But they're also willing to give the most as well. They're willing to give the most. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and move on to the Oracle cards. Let's start here with the archetypes and let's get some more information on the type of lover that they are. So we have child and eternal and in the light attributes, it says determination to remain young in body, mind and spirit, ability to see things with fresh eyes. So I like that. This isn't someone who is going to hold themselves back. So if this is, a, of course, a new connection, I see here with the Two of Cups, it could definitely be a new connection that you are developing with this person. It's like, this is an, an individual who is going to approach you like you are a new person. This isn't someone who is going to be held back because of the things that they've experienced in the past. 
Like this is someone who has pretty much gotten over the worst that it could be when it comes to, you know, relationships and connections. They've gotten over um, the worst part. So yeah, they're pretty much willing to open up. And there is a childlike aspect here to this person as well. They could be someone who definitely loves to play. I know their mind is always fresh with new ideas, new opportunities, um, new creativity, new inspiration here. So I think that this person just has a new vision for their life and they want to be very limitless with what that vision is. So, you know, this is a limitless type of lover. It's like, if we're not headed to the top, where are we going? That type of lover. They're, they're very ambitious. Okay. So yeah, they want what they want. <laughs> they want what they want. But yeah, there is a youthfulness here when it comes to this person. Um, there could be an age gap between you and this individual, but it does not necessarily have to be the case. So let's see what else we get from the archetypes deck. And then we're going to move on. Okay. And they also got the fool and the light attributes, fearlessly revealing emotion helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy. So this could be someone who doesn't really take themselves too serious. Um, and here's the word fearlessly again. And I know that's something that came up here as well. So, you know, this is someone who is going to not be afraid to really show you their hand or to even express their emotions. They may express their emotions in different ways, you know, if it's through humor and there's the aspect of playfulness again. So I think that... I mean, it depends on how you take humor. Some people don't like it. Some people are, I don't know, they're too serious. But it seems like this person doesn't really take themselves too serious in life. They are a serious person, I feel like, when it comes down to what they want out of life. But just within their general demeanor, they could just be, be very funny. You know, I just think that this is an exciting lover, like someone who just wants to plan. I'm just picking up Sagittarius energy, like with adventure and travel. That's just something that I'm picking up here. But as far as the other sign that I see here, we also have Aries. So the person on your mind, yeah, we have Aries and, Sag Aries and Sagittarius. So the person on your mind could definitely be a fire sign. Those are the main ones that are coming through. I feel like if I was, there's everything here. Like we have wands, we have pentacles, we have cups, we have swords. But I feel like if I was like, oh, all of the signs, it just wouldn't make sense to y'all. So primarily here, I see Aries and Sagittarius energy. But okay, so let's move on to, I want to get another, I want to get more like characteristics about them. But I also have pretty much I'm going to do like, you know, great, a really great aspect about them and also a shadow aspect about them as well when it comes to what type of lover that they are. Because, you know, we have to understand duality when it comes to people. OK, so this person is actually really great, in my opinion. I think they're really great. But, you know, everybody has their thing about them. So it's just kind of about accepting that. We have tenacity here. Okay, so this is someone who doesn't give up. They don't give up. Like, But that plays into the ambition here as well. Like, They know what they want. And I'm not mad at them. I feel like in the past, they've been very foolish. Like, They've made the wrong choices. I feel like in the past, they've kind of kept things up in the air with people. Um, I feel like they maybe even had a lot of choices um, and opportunities, options and opportunities. So you know, there's the potential player aspect about it. To where it's like you're for the streets <laughs> it is what it is but the thing i do like about just them being in their imagination is at least they're giving themselves the opportunity to dream and to see you know what is right for them i just think that when you stay in the seven of cups energy for too long it can become very overwhelming and you can start to hesitate and not really make the best decision because you've been in that space for too long. But I'm not mad about someone who wants to be in their imaginative headspace. I'm not mad about that. But yeah, yeah, with tenacity, like this is just someone who doesn't give up. Even when they've made mistakes in their past, it's like they're going to continue to keep pushing through and moving forward and solidifying themselves. So yeah, very ambitious person. Um, this is this could also be someone who doesn't take like they don't take 
no for an answer, but I would say maybe watch that. I mean, the way that it's coming up isn't necessarily bad, but I would just say watch that, especially if you know that you have very strong boundaries right now at this point in time, then yeah, watch it. They may not take no for an answer. So you kind of have to gauge it by how comfortable that you are, if that makes sense. But okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the Dark Mirror Oracle and see what else comes up for this individual that is on your mind. All right, so we have I Won't Cry For You. Okay, so this person could be a bit savage, okay? But it's kind of expected with them showing up so strong, especially with this Aries energy and then with their need for to be able to explore and venture out into the world. But yeah, this person could be a bit savage, but this is the type of individual where it's like, let's say, you know, the connection got messed up or let's say you did something to this person and it messed up the connection and it turned them off right it's like they're kind of kind of just look at you where it's like okay well you had your turn with me and now it's time for my next connection and now it's time for me to go find someone else or now it's time for me to go out into the world and maybe someone else will find me so this isn't someone who is going to beg and chase okay this isn't someone who is going to be on their knees begging like they're in a 90s r&b video okay this is not that type of person like this is the individual who has self-respect so they're gonna move on it might seem a bit savage to you but that's just how it is for this person i think that this is someone who knows that they are an asset they know that they're a blessing so they don't have to accept less they know that they're skilled and capable they seem to be pretty adaptable as well. That's another um, characteristic that came up or adjective rather. Yeah, they seem to be very adaptable. And it just seems like there's a lot that they want to experience in life, just even alone on their, like, on their own alone. But they want to explore a lot in a connection with someone as well. So it's like, if it's not there, if it does not work out, then best believe this person is going to move on and it's going to make you feel like, dang, did this person even care about me? Did this person even love me? And this is someone who is going to show you through their actions that they do. So I don't think that's something to question, but I'm just saying, hopefully you don't <laughs> fumble this or hopefully this connection isn't fumbled. Hopefully they don't fumble you. Hey, but this is definitely not the person who is going to stick around, beg, chase, cry. They're going to pursue in that emperor energy. They're going to pursue and be assertive. But it's kind of giving me that it's for a limited time only. It's like the window of opportunity is going to is gonna close. It's like the door isn't always going to be open with this person. So they could be a bit cutthroat. Okay? They can be a bit cutthroat. So... Let's look at relationships, okay? Like, how do they show up in relationships here with the wisdom of the oracle? All right, so we have here flexible. Okay, that's good. So this isn't such a strict and rigid type of person. They're not a strict and rigid person. Like I said, they don't take their selves too 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 serious even though they do have a serious demeanor it's like when you look at this person their face probably be so like <laughs> like when i say stoic it's like their face is just kind of like poker face you know it's poker face it is what it is so um <laughs> you might not even know how they feel until it comes down to when they're in their masculine energy of pursuit then you're kind of like oh okay so that's how you feel you know <laughs> That's how you feel. But yeah, this individual is definitely a flexible lover, you know, and I think they're flexible because they just want peace. Like I told you in the beginning of the reading, there's someone who values mutuality and, you know, reciprocity. So they feel like it should be mutually beneficial. The connection should be beneficial for everyone. Like everyone should be getting what they want and need out of the connection, out of the relationship. 
So this is someone who is willing to bend. You know, this is someone who's willing to compromise. You know, oftentimes with the emperor, like, and if we would have got the emperor in reverse, I would have been like, I don't know. This is, this could be a bit of a forceful person, like someone who not only is in an authoritative position, but they could be author authoritarian. Wait, what's the word? Not authoritative, but it's another word. Let me figure it out. Yes, <laughs> y'all, it's authoritarian. I knew I knew I had it right. So just someone who like wants complete control and wants complete obedience and you just have to do what they want. Like, and that's it, you know, just really controlling in a bad and demanding way. You know, this is not that type of individual. This is someone who is going to be flexible and diplomatic. And it's all coming from a place of peace. Okay, it's coming from a place of peace. So it's not going to be hard to, I want to say, get your way. I just feel like if your way is reasonable and it makes sense, then you'll get your way. <laughs> All right, so let's see what else. We also have here higher power. And then even on the bottom of the deck here, I see mending. So this is someone who is more so the type of lover that is going to want to strengthen and build a bridge as opposed to tear the bridge down. So if you're going through issues with this person, it's like they're going to want to find the commonality. They're going to want to find the common ground and they're going to want to compromise. That's the type of person that this is with mending and even with flexible. But yeah, with higher power here. You know, I love this because it seems as though this is someone who is a very intuitive, okay, lover as well. They could even be a bit psychic, the person that you're asking about, um, or even someone who puts the higher power first in all aspects of their life. So this could also be a very spiritually inclined person as well. So not someone who only focuses on the 3D aspects of connection, but even someone who may focus on you know, um, this, the connection within the higher dimensions, like even the 5D, you know, like what is going on there. So this person can be very gifted with sights. It's something that I'm getting here as well. Just very spiritually inclined. And yeah, they are going to be focused on the spiritual aspects of the connection between you and them so like if they notice you and they see like oh no this is a soulmate like you know this is someone i could potentially marry this is someone i could potentially be with i think i want to be with this person is like they're going to give themselves the opportunity to explore that option this isn't someone who is just going to shut that off just because they feel like it you know or it's because we're living in the 3d so we can have these superficial connections with people it's like they focus on the spiritual aspects and that connection. And yeah, this is also someone who, you know, I just keep hearing they put God first. They put God first. So I know that God is called different names to different people. You know, for the sake of this reading, I also say the divine because I feel like it'll encompass all of the possibilities for how you call God or how they call God. But yeah. Yeah. This is definitely someone who's going to put God first, like in pretty much everything that they do. And I think that this is what has even helped them to just become a lot much more mature and still have the ability to get over their past pain and trauma, things that they've experienced, even things that they have imposed upon themselves. It's like if it wasn't for this higher power in their life, they wouldn't even be here. And I think they wouldn't even have the self-respect that they have and just even the generosity to still be willing to give and put their best foot forward so that's what's going on i'm gonna get y'all one more card from this is the this is the music oracles so we're gonna get one more card <laughs> just to talk about this person's i guess attitude and towards love towards relationships let's see what they have so they got miles davis <laughs> and miles davis says play like you don't know how 
So this is nice. Play like you don't know how. Because it's like this person, they just try for the sake of trying. And I'm not mad at them. It's kind of like that fearless attitude and persona that's coming back up here again. They'll literally just try. You know, like I said, some people are too scared to explore things. But it's like this person is going to try. Like they love adventure. Progress is impossible without shock. Okay, so they could be a very progressive person. And then the keynotes are those left unplayed. So a progressive person, but I also feel like they're not forceful and they just don't do too much. They don't do too much or try to impose their way. Um, the keynotes are those left unplayed. That's kind of like saying that some words are better left unsaid. So I just think this is a tempered person, you know, and just even taking it back to Sagittarius, I really feel like this person you asked about is a Sagittarius. Like, they're probably not, but I just keep picking that up. It's just the aspect of tact, like knowing when to say, knowing what to say, when to say, when to say it, knowing what to do and when to do it. So I just feel like this person has kind of mastered that as well. Just a very mature person. But yeah. This is a mature lover, y'all. The person you asked about, they're very mature. <laughs> and they have self-respect. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it right here, y'all. I definitely hope that you enjoyed this reading. I definitely hope that it was able to help you understand this person a lot better and make the best decision that you need to make if you're gonna continue on with this person or take a step back. It's really up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it right here. Pile one. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Definitely make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next one. Be blessed, fam. All right, my pile two people. If you chose the Modern Witch Tarot deck with the green fluoride crystal, then I'm going to go ahead and get started with your reading for today. But of course, welcome. <laughs> if you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, I definitely want to give you all a special welcome back. And I want to continue to express my love and my appreciation and gratitude for you all just tuning into my channel and spending time here with me. I appreciate everything that you all do. And I'm just going to do my best to keep showing up, dropping these readings that you all enjoy, and just being able to support y'all in the best ways in which I can. So thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. And... I'm just going to continue to keep doing my best. So if you have not subscribed, go ahead and click the button and join the fam today. Okay, I promise that you will like it here. And also make sure you check out the links in the description box as well. Now, there's so many links there as far as the different things that I'm doing around the web. So I'm always going to encourage you to click around and get nosy. But also there's information there if you would like to support this channel through donations if you're not able to donate to this channel then i would say the best thing you can do is to subscribe because it's free and it also helps to push my channel my readings even further into the algorithm and to just you know impact as many people as possible <laughs> okay so that was my intention when i started this channel was to grow and to impact as many people so if you would like to support me in my mission, then I would say that definitely go ahead and subscribe. But yes, pile two. We're going to go ahead and get started with the reading for today. And the question that we're asking Spirit today is what type of lover are they? So the person on your mind, that specific person, what type of lover are they? And in addition to the modern witch tarot, I also have five other oracle decks, y'all. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we have Justice. We also have the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, I'm not mad at Justice. I'm definitely not mad. Um, the person on your mind can definitely be a Libra. So that's what I see here. Let's see what else we had. Oh, we had the five of wands. But I'm gonna get some clarification on the five of wands because it can be a bit challenging. But in relationships, it doesn't have to be that it doesn't have to be that challenging. 
doesn't have to be that challenging, but we'll see. We'll see. We also have the Queen of Cups here. We have the Three of Swords. We have the Ten of Cups. I think that this is someone who would put themselves through some type of suffering just to have love at the end of the day, you know? Like, this is someone who would say, like, I've went around the world. I've seen many faces. I've met many people. I've went through a lot of relationships. I've went through a lot just to be here, <laughs> you know, just to be here with you. Like, you know, so I think this is someone who has definitely suffered to find love. OK, they tend to put themselves through pain and suffering or they experience a lot of pain just to get what they want. So I'm going to get some more information about that. I'm going to get some more information about that. Like why this person would like want to put themselves through that. Or maybe it could just be something they've naturally experienced in life. It's just how their life has always went. But why would you want to put yourself through, through suffering? Like if anything, it just shows that they have, um, I want to say like a strong heart, a diligent heart. You know, they could be like a resilient, like they could have a resilient heart, you know? So that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to get some more information when we get there, but I'm going to start <laughs> from the beginning. But yeah, pretty much um, the type of lover that this person is, I feel like they're a very integritous type of lover. You know, this is someone who wants to ensure that any decisions that they're making when it comes to a connection or relationship is going to be a decision that benefits everybody and not just themselves. So this is someone who isn't a selfish individual. This isn't someone who is going to only look out for themselves. I think they do value and prioritize their own happiness and comfortability, but I don't see this as this being someone who's just going to get what they want out of a connection and that's it. You know, this is someone who is going to be fair, okay? This is someone who cares about harmony, like harmony for everyone. And I also feel like this is someone who cares a lot about equity. So it's like, what can they bring to the table? But it's also within the understanding that it may not be, I want to say in a sense, equal Y'all know how it is with people nowadays where they're just like, oh, 50-50 relationship, it got to be 100% equal. And it's like, there's no way that it could be 100% equal because we may have strengths that we can provide to the relationship and another person may have strengths that they can provide, but they're different strengths. So it's equitable. It's not 100% equal. <laughs> but okay, so this is that type of person, you know, and this is someone who is a very accountable type of individual. So they're gonna be accountable for their for their actions and they're gonna be accountable for their words. So this is an individual where it's like the words and the actions must line up, okay? It must line up. So I think that this is something that they not only require from the, for themselves because they have such a high level and sense of integrity, but it's something that they also require from another individual as well. So dealing with this person hey i mean look you can't it's not really too much room for error here okay it's not really too much room for error because i feel like this person been through a lot in general in their dating history in their past they've been through a lot they've experienced a lot so at this point in time what i can say is they need relief okay that's something i would tell this person like you need relief like, maybe you need to step back from dating. I don't know. Like, but you need some actual relief because your heart has been through a lot of pain and hurt. But, and yet, here they still are. 
<laughs> and yet here they still are. So this person is a resilient lover, but I'm gonna get there. But yeah, this is someone who values simplicity when it comes to connections, okay? They're a very simple lover. Like this isn't someone where you're gonna have to jump through hoops to understand this or it has to be a complicated situation it has to be so complex like no like because if it gets to become too complex it's too overwhelming for this individual so they prefer things to be very simple direct straight to the point and that's it very factual that's it like what are the facts you know but i will say that this individual can be okay they can be in their queen of swords energy so if they don't trust, then of course, they're going to have their boundaries there. That just is what it is. This person, I feel like they're always going to have boundaries or they're always going to have some type of protective measures that are in place to protect their heart. You know, they've been through a lot, so they have to do it. So this person is a very protective type of lover as well. And I feel like because they understand how important it is to protect their heart, they're only going to be trying to move forward with integrity so that they can also protect your heart as well so there's a protective aspect here okay it may not be physically protective in that way but emotionally protective yes emotionally protective yes so let's see what else is going on here yeah this person is someone who values feeling comfortable and safe within their connections and they care a lot about their own personal happiness like I said, it's not just about that in self in selfish ways, but it's like they're going to put themselves first, you know? It's like, am I comfortable here? Like, these are things that they're always going to be asking themselves. So this person does think a lot, okay? <laughs> they think a lot, and I feel like they could also talk a lot as well, very talkative. But yeah, they have to think like, okay, what are the pros and cons? It's like they're always weighing the, those options. Like, okay, what's the pros and cons of this connection? So I would just say that this isn't a stupid lover. This is someone who is very observational. They observe. So there could be some Scorpio energy here. Actually, yeah, here with the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups is Scorpio. So yeah, the signs that I see, the two that stand out, of course, are Libra and Scorpio. <laughs> Those are the two that I that I see here. So the person on your mind could either be one of those two. One of those two signs. But yeah, Scorpio, Libra. Oh yeah, even Cancer or even Pisces here as well. So even here with the High Priestess, it just makes me think about someone who is a researcher. Like someone who is always looking for like uh, secret wisdom or... They're always looking for some information, you know, with the high priestess, it just reminds me of like the aspect of emotional depth here as well. Even though it's not the moon, it does, the high priestess does connect to the moon, okay? That's like the ruling planet for the high priestess. So there's an emotional depth here as well. So this person, they are very factual, but when it comes down to their heart space, they're also very deep here as well. And they try their best to make sense of how they're feeling. They really do try their best to do that. So yeah, this is someone I feel like even here with the Queen of Cups that is really going to want to understand you. You know, they want to understand you. They want to understand your emotions. I feel like this isn't someone who is afraid to confront these things because they're happening. <laughs> you know, they're not afraid to confront their subconscious mind or just what's going on there or just even information that could be hidden. It's like this is someone who's not really afraid to do that. I feel like this is someone who isn't afraid to get to the root causes and issues when it comes down to relationships. So if you are going through something with this person, it's like they're actually going to want to sit there and talk like, OK, what is the root? OK, how can we solve this? OK, what is going on? So that's the type of lover that they are. They're, I want to say they're kind of like a fixer. They're a fixer, but I, I just also just feel like this person has a level of integrity here as well. So to the extent in, what, in which they're willing to fix things, hey, I don't know, because they've been through a lot in the past. So this person, I feel like could just be really cutthroat at a specific point in time, but this isn't someone who is not going to 
give it a chance or give you a chance or actually want to fix what's going on so that it's very simple and not so complex. But yeah, this is definitely someone who is a very caring, compassionate, calm, and empathetic lover as well. They are someone who is going to listen to you and they're not afraid to deal with, you know, crazy emotions. <laughs> I feel like this is also someone who has a great deal of self-love, you know, they are someone who they prioritize their happiness. So I think that this is someone who tends to want to be in more so happy and easygoing connections that do work, but they're not just kind of aimless in connections or they're not mindless. Like this is someone who is very tapped in. They know how they feel and they could even be psychic, even with the high priestess, psychic and even here with the queen of cups to a point be, that they know exactly what it is that's going on with you so this is an observant lover this is someone who is tapped in this is someone who is going to be able to tell when you have a good when you're having a good day or when you're having a bad day like this is also someone who is very maternal as well and this is their strength like they're actually gonna want to take care of you and make sure that you're good like this is the person that is gonna want to provide like even basic you know necessities like this is the type of person that'd be like, oh, like if you're having a bad day, they might be like, okay, well, did you eat today? Like what's going on with you today? Like they're actually going to want to be able to fit, fill in the needs that you may have just to even make your day go by a lot better. That's the type of person that this is as well. Yeah, they're just very compassionate. And this is also a very vulnerable person and they find strength through vulnerability Okay, like this is the type of person who finds strength through exploring things that are beneath the surface as well. They're not afraid to explore. This is someone who's not going to be afraid to get to know you. Okay, that's the type of lover that they are. They're going to want to get to know you. They're going to want to get to know the inner workings of you. Like they could be highly psychic as well. Like, so I don't know if that's something, I mean, y'all are here, <laughs> but you know, in real time, when you're dealing with a psychic in real time, like it can be a bit scary. It can be a bit scary. You know, I can't sit here and tell you that I haven't chased off a lot of lovers by telling them that I was a psychic. <laughs> I can't. They all end up disappearing at some point because they don't believe it to be true. But then once things start falling into place and the things that I said kind of came to pass, it's like, okay, now, now they want to believe it. But yeah, this person is definitely a psychic. It may be a bit scary to deal with, but you're already here. So I feel like you're comfortable with the metaphysical, okay? You're comfortable with things that go on in the subconscious because you want to know, okay? That's the good thing about tarot. It's like you want to know what is really at play in your situation. That is what is really going on beneath the surface, what is really hidden. So yeah, that's something here as well. And I also feel like this is someone who wants the best out of life. Like even taking it back to the Libra energy, it's like, this is someone who wants the best. So they want to experience like the best experiences, you know, like or go out on the best dates or they just want to experience some type of luxury and status. You know, when it comes to life, they want to be satisfied with life, comfortable with life. They want to have a sense of achievement. Here, So this is definitely a lover who is going to value those milestones that y'all have between the both of you. And I feel like this is also someone who's going to be willing to celebrate those milestones, even if it's personally what's going on in your life as well. But they're going to want to create and have different experiences with you and celebrate those things. So it's kind of giving me like four wands energy as well. Like they want to be there to celebrate things with you. So it seems like this is a very supportive lover. Like they're going to support you emotionally and this is their strength. This is how they are a blessing to other people. This is how they show love. This is how they give love by, you know, for them, it could be like quality time. It, you know, it, it could also be acts of service. That's their love language. But yeah, this individual has definitely suffered. Like I said, there's someone who, and it's, it's, they don't have to do this. They really don't have to do this, but they're definitely someone who 
could experience like just inner conflict and struggles within them. And this could be, you know, just related to the PTSD of it all, of things that they have experienced in their past, even here with the nine of wands, like they've experienced some pain here. So they may, you know, deal with some inner struggle, like the road to having what they really truly want out of love, even with another person and even potentially with a family, it just has not been easy. You know, this person could have been put in a lot of competitions with others as well, or felt like they've had to compete or felt like they've been overlooked, you know, like they've, other people have been chosen over them. You know, this person could have also been cheated on in their past and just done dirty, but, and yet they're still here, you know, and yet they're still here. And when I split the deck, I even see the temperance, temperance card. So it could be that this is someone who is trying to take things in moderation because they just know how tumultuous their journey in love has been. Okay, tumultuous. And um, yeah, temperance is Sagittarius as well. So, you know, you know, this could just be. I mean, this is, it seemed like this is a great person. It seemed like they're tapped in, they're here, but also how it's played out within their dating life and history has just been, I guess, not the best. <laughs> so at this point in time, it's like, this is someone who is just trying to flow with life's challenges. And this is the type of lover that they are, okay? They're also a very fluid type of individual as well, like, Though there's a lot of water energy here, but yeah, I did pick that up. It could just be like the the Scorpio aspects to them, the Pisces and also Cancer. But yeah, this is definitely someone who just tries to go with the flow. Like they've been through a lot with the Nine of Wands. So <laughs> here they are. They're a resilient lover. They have a very strong heart. They're very determined and... They're just very courageous. Like this is a brave person. So, I mean, unfortunately, this person has chosen to be in these unnecessary competitions with others. They have chosen to be here. They, they for some reason, have always seemed to end up in third party connections. And it just is what it is. Like, <laughs> it is what it is. Because it's just like, is this just how your life has been going? Or is this something that you have chosen? You know, it could be both. It could be something that they have chosen. But I just want this person to know that like you don't have to struggle to find love. You don't have to put yourself through unnecessary pain and I also heard pressure just to get what you want. I feel like what you want can be a seamless process. You know, what you want can be seamless. Now, another, I guess, potential downside to this individual that I can say is that this person, they play a lot, okay? They joke a lot. I feel like this is someone who could potentially be very hurtful with their words. So something I think that they're learning how to do is to just temper themselves in what they say. There's a potential and possibility that what they say verbally, of course, could be very harsh, okay? It could come off as someone who is very harsh or even someone who is being very cruel or someone who is being... I wanted to say bitter, but bitter, harsh, cruel, critical. Yeah, critical. So it could come off as that as well. I don't see Virgo, but I'm just saying, <laughs> okay? They could be that potential. They could be that way as well, potentially, you know, as a lover with their words. So what I can say is, is that their words do have the opportunity if if let's say you and them was in an argument you know the argument could it could get to the point where now they're saying something that is potentially hurtful okay so the argument could get to that point and i also feel like this person could be a bit fragile as well like a bit of a fragile lover but i just think it's momentarily like it's just based off of what they've experienced in the past it's not necessarily something that they couldn't get over or something that they couldn't heal but it just seemed like maybe at this point in time they're a bit fragile so i just want to tell this person as well as like you don't have to be a martyr like always pull back in 
give yourself the love and the nurturing that you feel like you personally need for yourself as opposed to just rushing to give it to other people. So that's something that they might have to be reminded of. It's like always remember to take care of yourself. You know, that's something that if you decide to move forward with this person, you're going to have to remind them of that. Like take care of yourself. Make sure to take care of yourself. But even here, when I split the deck, I see the Ace of Cups. So like I said, this is someone who they've experienced a lot. They could have some PTSD, but it's like they're still going to, to be there. So if there's a new romantic opportunity, they, what it seems like, are going to have no issues with tempering maybe the, these challenging aspects of them just for what they want or for the sake of the connection. So that's where the aspect of the diplomacy comes in. That's where the aspect of it is. So yeah, I think that this person, me could even be Gemini here as well, but there's just the aspect of opposing forces and always trying to find the balance between the two with justice and then even with temperance. It's like the opposing forces. So this could be a very nuanced lover is what I'm trying to say. They're not like black and white. They actually are very nuanced when it gets once it gets into their emotional space. Like they could be very black and white with other aspects of life. But once it comes to love, it's like they're very nuanced. It just kind of reminds me of a pendulum, like swinging back and forth. And I don't know why, but I just got that, where it's just the nuance. Like it could be here or it could be over there. And that's something that you would have to be okay with is the gray area and the nuances when it comes to people. And even when it comes to this person. But yeah, I mean, this is a resilient person. I think they know what they want at the end of the day, which is a healthy, emotionally fulfilling connection with another person. That's something that they want. And I shuffled and shuffled, but here we have the strength card here again. So they're determined, okay? This is a determined lover. This is someone who's determined to experience what they want out of life. And we also have Leo. So we have Leo, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, and Libra. Those are the signs that we have here. But yeah, I mean, like I said, this person has suffered. <laughs> They've suffered, but they have a lot of confidence in what it is that they want and they're just not going to stop. So in a way, they're even ambitious and just a very self-aware and vulnerable lover. I feel like this is someone that you can actually talk to and relate to and they're going to understand you and they actually want to get to know you. Like, you know, it's that type of person. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and move on. I just had to get some clarification on how this person was showing up because they're very nuanced. They're very nuanced. But um, okay, so let's move on to the archetype decks. So this is the archetype deck. I'm going to get some additional information on the type of lover that they are. y'all i literally can't make this stuff up we have judge <laughs> in the light attributes balancing justice and compassion managing the fair distribution of power so yeah highly integrative person but even here with the queen of cups um very compassionate as well i mean i think that's more so like king of cups energy but mm, caring compassion can be the same thing okay tomato tomato potato potato but um yeah, we have judge and, you know, even someone that's in the justice energy tends to be a judge. Like, I don't know if I mentioned Judge Judy, but I did mention um, the Queen of Swords energy here as well. So they're going to have their boundaries. OK, it just is what it is. <laughs> they're going to have their boundaries. But um, even here on the bottom of the deck, we see Prince and it says romantic charm and potential for power. So yeah, this is definitely someone who will charm the socks off of you. But I just think it's because of like how integrative they are and just how they move and how they show up. Like, I think that's something that you're really going to respect. Like, it's not just about love here. It seems like this person values respect. So they could be like a respectful lover here as well. But like I said, don't let the banter between the both of y'all get too much, you know, or become too much. Because they could potentially say something that'll hurt your feelings. So, hey, 
You know, this person could be very blunt with how they talk about things, very transparent, very straightforward, very honest. So that's all I'm saying. Okay, be careful. Be careful there. Because I know when somebody tells me something I don't like, I know how I feel. So I don't know how you take it when people tell you things that you don't want to hear. But yeah, um, there's a lot here that has to do with power as well. Managing the fair distribution of power, romantic charm, and potential for power. So yeah, I think that this person is a very powerful person, but I feel like their power comes through the maternal aspects of them, like the nurturing and caring for. And I feel like it also comes from their ability to explore the subconscious and to explore things that are beneath the surface. There's a lot of power there. And then also their power here when it comes to, of course, being resilient when it comes to love and like being determined and ambitious to go after what they want, not being afraid, even though they've experienced some pain and hurt in the past, understanding that they're very close to their goal. They may just have to, you know, take some different measures and how they go about it. So... Let's go ahead and move on to, oh yeah, and even here with the prince, it reminds me of like the Knight of Cups. So I just feel like this person is going to express how they feel. It may not come off as so, 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 so romantic, but as far as like you understanding that you can trust this person's intentions or trust what they're telling you, I believe you can do that. But hey, you know, this is a general reading. So let's go ahead and move on to the hip hop queen deck. Hip hop queens rather. So I'm going to be getting, you know, really good aspect about them. And then also with the dark mirror, you know, shadow aspect about them. <laughs> it is what it is. Like everybody has their thing. Okay. Everybody has their thing about them. So we have to acknowledge that. All right, here, so we have emotions. Yeah, this person can have very deep emotions, you know, very, very deep, but they can also have just a very, I don't want to say cavalier, but cavalier came to mind. It's just like, I don't want to say cavalier as far as like nonchalant, but it's not hard to know how this person feels. It's not hard. It's like, I feel like they have a way of being able to express their emotions and they're deep, you know, just even there with the high priestess is deep. <laughs> they have a way to do that. They, cause I think it's just because this person, I feel like they really not only just want you to get to know them, no, want to get to know you, but they also want you to get to know them as a person. They want you to be able to explore them and just how they feel and how they think. I think they do all of this because they want to inspire friendship between you and them so it's gonna be hard for this person to get to the point to where they say things that hurt your feelings but if they do hurt your feelings it's like they want to make it better it's not like they're gonna just be bitter and cruel and critical just for the sake of it it's like if it does happen they're gonna wanna make things better or make it up to you so yeah, this person definitely has a way of expressing their emotions. Like they don't really have an issue with with talking about how they feel. So that's good because I feel like you're always going to know where you stand. Oftentimes with the Queen of Cups energy, it's like someone who's willing to show you their hand. Um, I wouldn't really say like, oh, they wear their heart on their sleeve like that, you know, just being in the justice energy. But I will say that they are someone who is willing to show you their hand like there's someone who's going to be willing to talk about how they feel or talk about their intentions and talk about how they feel specifically about you about your connection so they are definitely someone who's going to show their hand and i definitely appreciate that because in a world where people lie it's nice to get like some honesty it feels very refreshing 
All right, so let's get a shadow aspect because like I said, everybody has their thing. If you're not afraid of emotions, then this person is not going to be overwhelming for you. But if you are afraid when it comes to emotions, then I don't know if this will be the person for you. All right, so we have the temple of my body. Yeah, this person's very much, I was about to say body-based. <laughs> They're very much in their body. That's all I'm trying to say. Like even with their intuition, with their psychic abilities, even there with the queen of cups, like nine of cups, this person is very much in their body. So how this basically shows up is essentially... Just even taking it back to what I said about this person potentially being a martyr. It's like sacrificing themselves or dying on the cross. Like this person has suffered, really suffered for love. They've put their selves through so much. I feel like they've even given their body to just the wrong people. Like they've had intimacy with the wrong people and it has depleted them. So their issue really has to do with their energetic output like how much energy they actually put out there because they find strength from you know sharing a certain uh amount of emotional energy or just giving or nurturing or caring others caring for others that's where they find their strengths but at the same time they can do it to an excess and now they're going to be left depleting themselves you know or living with a glass half full so that's that's an issue with this person. It's like, yeah, they feel how they feel, but I feel like sometimes their emotions can potentially stir them wrong because they have such a deep well of emotion. So it could potentially stir them wrong. And just in a sense, like burn themselves out. So this person definitely has the potential of burning out or crashing out because they decide that they want to make themselves a martyr or they want to sacrifice themselves for other people or sacrifice themselves for the greater goal. And it's okay. Like they know what they want, but I, like I said, I just don't think that you have to put yourself through pressure and pain to experience the goodness out of relationships, especially when it comes to other people, like you don't have to suffer. So yeah, I think this person has been in like abusive relationships in the past as well. You know, so just trying to do what they can to help someone, even in the Queen of Cups, like energy, that energy could be a bit guilty of people pleasing, like just doing so much, potentially not getting anything back in return. So, hey, I mean, it's definitely a lesson that this person is going to have to understand. But it's like, if you care for this person, if you love this person, if you find that they're doing this, then I mean, just gently telling them and bringing it to their attention should should be able to help okay so let's move on to the wisdom of the oracle as far as like in relationships and connections like how do they show up we have here co-create okay i like that I like that. You know, this is someone that you can definitely work with. You know, if there's a goal or something that you have in mind, I think that this person is the individual that would help to execute it. So if you have any relationship goals, it's like you and this person can have like just opposite energies, but it works. Like they could be like very, very intellectual and you could just be the person that's really good at like executing things or getting things done. So it actually kind of both works. Like they could be the brains behind the operation. They could kind of be in the background, you know, just behind the curtain with things. And you could be the individual that is, you know, let's just say in the spotlight or something. So, yeah, like this is definitely someone I feel like when it comes down to connections, like they're not just going to be there getting what they can get out of it. Like they actually are going to want to build with you. And that's nice. I feel like. You deserve that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I feel like you deserve that. I feel like anybody deserves that, like someone who's actually willing to, to help, you know. 
yeah, it's like with the relationship, they're always going to be just experiencing like just new ideas, like just because they're inspired, you know, so they could be inspired by you, especially if you're someone who is like a muse to them, you know, like a artistic muse. It's like they're going to be inspired. So yeah, that's the type of person that's, that this is in relationships. So you can always look forward to like your connection, just developing, you know, and just becoming even more beautiful over time, which is nice. Let's see what else we can get from the wisdom of the Oracle. Okay. And we have come to the edge. We have come to the edge. Like, I definitely like this. I just think that this person exhibits a certain amount of risk-taking <laughs> abilities. Okay. When I see come to the edge, it makes me think about the fool. So, you know, this is someone who could be very spontaneous lover, someone who isn't afraid to step into the unknown. Okay. They're not afraid to step into the unknown, but we already picked that up here anyway, just within their mind and their emotional depth. Like those are uncharted and unknown, you know, territories, <laughs> but they're still willing to go there. So yeah, this is someone who's definitely willing to step into the uncertainty of things. And they're also someone who is willing to make things better because there's like an innovative aspect to the fool as well. It makes me think about mastery. It's like you may not be an expert, but you're willing to undergo the process of mastery, the process of learning. So this is that type of person, but they're intellectual anyway, you know? So when you're an intellectual and educated person, you actually don't have to be afraid to do anything. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be afraid to do anything or to take any step because you're educated, you're smart, so you can figure it out. <laughs> you can figure it out. But yeah, this is definitely someone who likes the aspect of new beginnings. And I think they find, even there with the Ace of Cups, that's a new emotional beginning. I feel like they find a lot of enthusiasm and fun when it comes down to like starting new things. So that's really nice when it comes to this person. This person, like just taking it back to the emotions, like they're an intimate lover. Like this is really someone that you can get really, really, really close to. So if you, like I said, if you're not afraid of emotions and feeling the vibes, then okay, this your person because they have no issues with taking it there. <laughs> you know, they have no issues with taking it there. Like things can become intense. Things can become deep. But if this is what you want, like if this is what is going to get you to the 10 of cups, which is, okay, we can be vulnerable with each other. We're compassionate with each other. Like we're here. Like I got you, you got me. Like there's trust here. There's stability here. Like if that's what you need to get to this point, you know, is vulnerability and openness. And some people don't want that. It's like they want something for nothing, <laughs> you know? So yeah, this is definitely someone who is willing to take the risks, okay? They're going to be the person that's going to speak up. They're going to be a very verbal lover. They're going to tell you what they need, okay? They're going to say what they want, what they hope for. Like, this is the type of person. They don't play it safe when it comes down to what they want. So, yeah, that's them. That's them. Let's go ahead and move on to, oh, we even have here, go the distance. We have here, go the distance. So yeah, this is definitely someone that you could go the distance with. I think they're more so of like a relationship minded person. I think this is someone that you could actually get married to. Like this is that person, especially if you value the emotions of it all. <laughs> If you're okay with them being psychic, if you're okay with them being intuitive, if you're okay with them getting to the root of things, like if you want someone who is going to pay attention to that, then this is that person. But all right, let's go ahead and move on to the music oracles and we're going to get some more information about the type of lover that they are. I like these cards because they kind of like are focused on like, you can focus them on like attitudes about like about things or attitudes towards connections attitudes even towards love so all right let's see who they get all 
All right, so this person got Leonard Cohen. If y'all are familiar with Leonard Cohen's music, then hey, let me know. Let me know what your favorite song is. But yeah, it says when it comes to art, all that matters is telling your story well. <laughs> so yeah, this person I forgot could also be very artistic person, you know, someone who has the ability to express their emotions through their art. So that's also something I wanted to say there with the emotions card. Um, but yeah, travel lightly through the darkness. Yeah, this is definitely someone who has been in the dark. Okay, they've experienced a lot of dark times in relationships or just being done dirty, being done wrong, experiencing pain, and yet they still are looking for that emotional release to free them from their past. But yes, travel lightly through the darkness, even here with come to the edge, you know? So, you know, this is someone who, even though they've been through a lot, I feel like this is someone who like, doesn't want to hold on to that baggage. You know, I think this is why they spend so much time trying to learn more about themselves and research more about themselves, coming to conclusions about themselves because they don't want to hold on to baggage. And it says, learn to live in the intervals between events. So I think that this is someone who just doesn't get by on just the exciting aspects of connection or just like the passion, the passion, the passion. It's like, this is someone who you can actually experience like day-to-day -day living with them. Like this isn't someone who's just focused on, oh, the honeymoon phase of a connection. Like this is someone who I think is a lot much more serious, like when it comes to what they ultimately want out of life. So yeah, this isn't going to be the type of person where it's just like, <laughs> oh, it's hot and cold and oh, like, you know, we have so much fun and then now, and then it's nothing. You know how it can be. Like, I didn't see the Knight of Wands. So it's not that type of person. I think this is someone who, like, yeah, life can be unpredictable. But as far as for the love that they want to establish or the types of ways in which they want to love people or receive love, they want that to be stable and they want that to be predictable. That's what they want. So yeah, this isn't really one of those people that just get by on excitement, like here, excitement there. You know, this is someone who like genuinely wants things to be stable over time, you know, that you can deal with this person on a day-to-day -day basis and things will just be stable as opposed to dealing with this person here and there. And it's just like bouts of excitement and then nothing. I hope y'all get what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope y'all get what I'm saying, but yeah, they're just a very serious person when it comes to relationships. So I guess I could say you have a a serious lover. You have a integritous lover. <laughs> you have an honest lover. Yeah, that's just what you have here. <laughs> you have a psychic and intuitive lover. You know, so I'm gonna leave it here, y'all. I definitely hope that you were able to get some information from this reading. I hope it's able to help you decide like, okay, if you're going to push forward with this person or if you're going to <laughs> leave this person where they are, it's all about understanding, I guess, compatibility. Like chemistry is one thing, but what about long-term compatibility? So yeah, I'm going to leave it here. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Definitely make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one, fam. Be blessed. All right, my pile three people, if you chose the final rose tarot with the citrine crystal, then I'm going to go ahead and get started with your reading for today. But of course, if you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, then I would like to give you all a special welcome back. Shout out to all of my lovely returning subscribers. I just want to continue to thank y'all for just everything that you all do. I definitely look forward to posting even more readings that you all enjoy and just being able to show up be consistent and support y'all in the best ways in which I can so I'm always gonna take a second to thank y'all before I get started because my channel would not be where it is if it was not for you all tuning in and engaging with me so I'm always gonna extend you know some appreciation and some love <laughs> to y'all because Y'all are everything. Y'all really are. So thank you so much for being here. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and click that button. 
join the fam today because I promise that you will love it here. Also, make sure you check out the links in the description box as well. You can definitely click around and get nosy. I highly encourage it just so you can get to know just the other things that I'm doing around the web. And also, if you would like to support this channel through donations, you have the option to as well. But if you're not able to, then the best thing that you can actually do is to subscribe to the channel because it's free for you. But it also helps to push my readings even further into the algorithm so that we can continue to keep growing this space. So I would say consider that if you know you've been tuning in for a while and you haven't yet subscribed, just go ahead. Stop being stingy. Okay, stop being stingy. <laughs> just go ahead and subscribe. So, okay, pile three. We got to go ahead and get started because in addition to the final rose tarot, I actually have like five other oracle decks over here that I'm going to be um, getting some more information from in regards to the person that's on your mind. And I'm a yapper, so we got to get started. <laughs> Okay, so pile three, we're asking about the specific individual on your mind, like what type of lover are they? Okay, what type of lover are they? So let's get started. All right, so we have the eight of swords. We also have the hermit. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just laughing at myself. I'm like, all right. Brace myself. We also have the knight of wands. Okay, so... The person that you're asking about could potentially be like a fickle, a fickle lover, very fickle, but we're going to get some more information. I just think that this could be a bit of a challenging person to love or to be involved with. Just a bit challenging. That's, that's what I'm going to say, but we'll get some more information about it. We also have opening up. Opening up is the strength card. We also have the Eight of Cups, self-elimination. We also have the Ace of Wands. This person that's on your mind, they're so challenging that I feel like they even will trick themselves out of a good thing. That's how challenging that they are. They're just a very challenging lover, but we'll get some more information. Let me just get two more cards here and then I'll get started. We also have here the lovers. Yeah, I knew this was going to pop up. And then we have the villain. So this person you're asking about is very nuanced, okay? <laughs> They're very nuanced. So you have to be okay with that if this is someone that you're going to choose. But I'm just going to work my way through this energy step by step to help you understand. And so just so that the information is organized. This individual that you're thinking about can potentially self-sabotage things, okay? They can potentially self-sabotage things. I think that this individual <laughs> could just be the type of lover that is like when you first meet them, they're very, very passionate. They're very enthusiastic about you. They're very drawn towards you. You know, they could be very fun okay this could be a very physical lover so this is someone who likes intimacy they like physical touch they like sex that's something that they like 
They even could like cuddling. They just like touch, okay? So they definitely like intimacy in that way. But they could be a very fickle lover, a very hot and cold lover to where it's like, that'll be how they approach you in the beginning. And everything seems so nice. But they also have this shadow aspect inside to them that is also just as intense and can pull them away from the connection as well. So this is a very extreme lover. You know, sometimes they're really extreme on this side and things are very hot on this side. And then other times they're very extreme and things are very cold. So just very passionate person. They're very passionate, but their passion isn't consistent. OK, they experience these bursts of passion and enthusiasm, and then they also tend to withdraw and be recluse and be to themselves. So I think this individual you're asking about, they could be categorized as like an ambivert. You know, I think that's it. Right. It's like you can be very extroverted, but you could also be very introverted. That's how they are. <laughs> that's really how they are. And we can't tell when they're going to get into one energy or the other. I just think it happens in bursts. And I think it's something that you may not be able to trust unless you're willing to go, unless you're willing to deal with this. Okay. But you know, a reasonable, a reasonable person may not be able to trust this individual or to have a sense of security when it comes to this person. So I just think even in general, this person could be a very insecure lover as well. You know, there's someone who self-sabotages. There's someone who doesn't really trust how they really feel. Like they tend to put themselves through a lot of mental gymnastics. They put themselves through a lot of mental loops and cycles. And it's just, it's actually unnecessary. It's unnecessary because they're in a sense kind of tricking themselves out of a good thing. So if you believe yourself to be a good thing, you're a good partner when it comes to relationships, you know you can have a healthy relationship, you know you and this person have some initial chemistry and even compatibility, you might feel like you're compatible with this person. This is the individual that may experience those things with you, but in the back of their head, they're going to sabotage, okay? They know they're going to sabotage. It can even be in the forefront of their mind. They know they're going to sabotage. They know that they're is a limit to this unless you're willing to go through that cycle unless you're willing to go through the cycles of them being really passionate about you and then withdrawing you know and then coming back and then withdrawing if you're fine with that energy if you know how to handle it and you're emotionally mature enough to do that then hey you know this could be your person there's a lot of other you know very strong aspects about this connection and Maybe that's just what you want to focus on at this point in time. But yeah, this person tends to be a saboteur, okay? That's the type of lover that they are. Um, and it's not even more so of them, I think, wanting to hurt you. I think it's more so of a function of this person hurting themselves because they don't believe that they could actually have the best in life. They may not believe that they can have the best connection. They may not believe that they are deserving of those connections of something that's healthy or deserving of a healthy person. They may not feel that they're deserving of that. So, you know, that's a pathology that this individual is going to have to work on. This is a pathology that this individual is going to have to spend time on healing so they're not playing mind games with themselves and putting themselves through these mental hoops and gymnastics. So this could definitely be someone who is an overthinker, okay? They're an overthinker. And I think that they could be a bit immature, you know? It, they have a lot going on with themselves, but the way that it plays out to you could be very immature because, you know, they're in the moment, they're there. They're all about you when you're in front of them. But when you're not there, they can be very out of sight and out of mind. <laughs> out of sight and out of mind. That's how they could treat you. Out of sight and out of mind. So I split the deck here. I see the influencer. So this person can be hyper independent. Okay. To a, to, it's, it's, and I say hyper independent because it's independence to a fault. Okay. There's nothing wrong with being independent and there's nothing wrong with being self-sufficient. But when it comes down to your ability to 
establish a connection and a relationship with another person, you have to be open to not only being vulnerable, but you have to be open to adaptability as well. So I feel like this person wants to be adaptable. It's something that they really wish that they could do. I just don't think they have the capacity and the capability to do it at this point in time. You know, they're too fickle. They're too fickle. Like they're too in and out. They're too in and out. And I just wonder how it makes them feel. Like I just, I don't think this person even likes being like this. That's the thing about it. But they need help on trying to figure it out. Not saying that you should be the help. I just think it's going to come from this person being introspective and understanding the error of their ways. But yeah, this person is always, it's like their temperament can be very, they're, they're temperamental first and foremost, and it can be very moody. Okay. It can, it can get to the point of it being moody where they may convince themselves that, oh, like this situation isn't good enough for me. Like, or maybe, you know, I, I'm not satisfied or maybe there's something missing. Maybe there's something else out there for me. Like maybe I need to go explore it, you know? So this is someone who is definitely like an overthinker and they typically, like I said, will trick themselves or deceive themselves out of what actually could be potentially good for them. But it's only because they're so moody and temperamental. It's like, dang, get a grip. I just want to tell this person, like, get a grip, like, get a grip, <laughs> just be neutral, be neutral. Why does everything have to be so extreme? So they're an extreme lover. They really are. When it's hot, it's going to be hot. They're going to be there. They're going to be energetic. They're going to be passionate. They're going to be all on you. Like they're going to want to get physical. And then when you're not there, it's like they're experiencing all of these earth shattering thoughts and limitations that honestly shouldn't apply to their life anymore. It shouldn't apply to their life anymore because they need to understand how it's playing out for them. So just when I see here on this in your head thing and cycles, it just makes me think like this person is like hypnotizing themselves with beliefs that are not true. So I think that once this person gets on a thought, it's like that thought can really continue to develop and develop and manifest into a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's just like... This person needs to stop thinking sometimes. It's like you're literally overthinking. But yeah, <laughs> you know, it seems like this person could be a bit afraid to want to open up. They might give you the appearance that that's something that they're willing to do. But I think that they only have the capacity to be deep when it comes to themselves. You know, like what else they can learn about themselves. I think that's where they have the capacity to do it. But when it comes down to love and making the choice, I don't know. I don't really see that. I think that this person has unhealthy, I want to say experiences or even like unhealthy habitual behaviors and patterns when it comes to, to love. I also feel like this is someone who is a very intense lover. You know, they're also, they could also be very codependent as well. So this is probably why they will back up because they realize like, oh, it's getting too intense. Like I'm starting to feel like I need this person. I got to take a step back. This person doesn't understand that there is a healthy way that you can go about relationships that don't have to be so extreme. It doesn't have to be so intense all the time to start freaking them out. And now they want to start backing away. You know, it's like, stop freaking yourself out. Stop doing it. I just want to tell them. And then we also have here with the seven of um, swords here as well. So this hot and cold thing they got going on can really appear as deception. So you might think like, oh, yeah, this person is lying to me. You know, you feel like they're lying to you. You feel, you feel like they're not telling you the truth. And it's just because they move so covertly, like they're just moving in secret. And this thing that they're doing here can come off as, oh, this is a strategy. But what is it a strategy for? Okay. It's like, what is this a strategy for? Do you just want to play people or, or what? I feel like it's just a strategy for this person not wanting to acknowledge that they feel like they don't deserve love. You know, failing to want to acknowledge that 
and actually understanding that this person is stuck, but it's under the guise of, oh, I'm independent. You know, this is probably that individual at this point in time in their life. They're like, oh, I want to be single. I want to do me. But they're really scared. <laughs> they're really scared and they don't know how to open up. They don't know how to be vulnerable, not even with themselves. And they'll just remove themselves from a situation if things are getting too intense. They'll remove themselves. So <laughs> this is funny. I was about to say this is a ghosty lover. Now, this is definitely that person that you could experience breaks in communications with. You know, you can experience separation. You can experience no contact with them. And this is the thing that kind of gets me is like when they're in your face, they're going to be in your face. When they're in your face, they're going to be so present in your face. Like, they're going to show up like their best, you know? So I think this person could also be like a competitive type of lover as well. Like, they want to make themselves be the best option, but it seems like it's for the wrong reasons. Because what is the point of making yourself appear as the best option? What is the point of being so charismatic and being so charming and being around and trying to inspire these feelings of, you know, love and passion and excitement? What is the purpose of that just so you could back away and go be in, go be by yourself? So they're not consistent. This is an inconsistent lover. This is an inconsistent lover and it comes off as they are lying. It comes off as they are being deceptive. It comes off as they are... Um, potentially, you know, dealing with someone else or cheating or, you know, out there doing something else, but it's really them in their head, you know, tricking themselves, deceiving themselves. So because they lie to themselves and they deceive themselves and they back away from intense connections, even though they inspire the intensity, even though it's there within them. And that's the thing that gets me is like, this person is the one who is feeling all the intensity. This is probably the person that will press you, like literally press you like, no, no, come on, come on, come on. Like, come on, it's us. Like, yeah, come on, come on. Like, you know, it's like you pressing. Like, what is the purpose of pressing just for you to back up when things get too intense when you inspire the intensity? <laughs> you inspire the intensity. So that's pretty much what it is. This person is definitely an obsessive lover, okay? And it comes off as potentially even toxic here. But yeah, this person definitely, they're very enthusiastic and exciting. I feel like when you first met them, it was just kind of like, oh my God, so, so, so amazing, <laughs> you know? And we even have here with the bachelor, but just the bachelor is the emperor. But when we look at this, the surrounding cards, you know, it, this could be someone like, who I said is like when they show up, they're so like prepped and prime and they just seem so like they got it all together. And, you know, they're in this like, oh, I'm independent. So they could be doing pretty good financially for themselves. Like they got their own house, their own car, like they're doing their own thing. You know, they rely on themselves, which isn't a bad thing. They could also be very physically attracted here as well. So y'all could have a very strong like sexual connection or sexual compatibility. But deep down, Within all of this, it's like this person is just dealing with a lot of suppression of their real true emotions. This is a suppressive lover. This is someone who is not even just suppressing you, but they suppress themselves. So that's how it's going to appear in the connection in general, where it's like there's going to be a limit. You know, things are going to be controlled. Things are going to be controlled. I know when I was shuffling, I saw the king of swords. Okay, so this person could be a Libra where they try to keep things so controlled. Like the king of swords isn't the best archetype to get when it comes to a relationship reading. You know, with someone who is going to contain their emotions, you may not always know how they feel. Then even here with the bachelor and then even with um, the villain, which is the devil, it's just the aspect of like someone suppressing or having repressed feelings. You know, so this person has intense, like they're such an intense lover when I tell you, and it's not even just about sex. It's like, they're intense. It's like when this, this person wants you, they want you like, so I'm not even going to sit here and act like, okay, this person pursues you. It's not a lie. It's not a lie. When they're pursuing you, it's not a lie. Like they really do want you, but <laughs> they have these mental health issues 
okay? They're imprisoned in their mind. They have these mental health issues and then combined with the fact that they're independent and they don't really need anybody for anything, it's like, that'll be the thing that'll convince this person to walk away. So they allow their fears to get the best of them, even though they feel such, such an intense attraction and even though they'll feel such like intense emotions. So yeah, this person is just too intense and they really need to find ways to just be balanced. You know, they need temperance. They need moderation. They need to stop being on one side or the other and just find the middle ground. That's literally the best way. But I will say that let's get some more information about this person. I think the end, yeah, the end is death. Okay, so here, here's the potential of that intensity here with Scorpio. Let's go through the signs. We have, um, we have Virgo, we have Leo, we have Aries, we have Capricorn, we have Gemini, and yeah, and then I said, even here, what is this? This is the death card, yeah, Scorpio. Yeah, I said that already. I said that already. So, yeah, pretty much here with um, the death card, it just seems as though, <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the other aspect of intense emotions, like I said. And just the aspect of shadow work here as well. And then just even with um, the devil card, it's kind of more so like the shadow side to ambition, and it's also about like just dealing with a lot of imposed restrictions or even limitations and even the dark aspects of desire here as well. So yeah, I think this person has imposed like a lot of restrictions and limits on themselves just being in that eight of swords energy. So it comes off as they're being toxic because they just don't have a healthy way of releasing their energy or releasing their emotions and how they really feel. I also feel like this is one of those like butthurt type of lovers as well. It's like if things don't work out between the both of you, it's like this person is really going to be hurt. You know, they're going to be very hurt, even though they were the individuals that contributed to, you know, the connection sour souring or not going in a positive direction. I said they're a butthurt lover. No, they really are. Like, this is really a salty person. Like, they get so salty when they don't get what they want. They just feel like love is so much. Like, this person is just, they just too intense. I don't know what else to say. Like, just intense lover, too intense. Like, I don't know, energy like this, it just be like, why? <laughs> just be like, why? But yeah, this person could potentially be toxic. You know, relationships can easily turn toxic with them, but it's literally because they're actually really codependent people. They're codependent lovers. In all other aspects and areas of their life, they may be doing good, okay? There's nothing wrong with being in a hermit when it comes to other aspects and areas of life, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. But my advice or suggestion would be for this person to introspect when it comes to this aspect of how you show up in connections introspect when it comes down to the hot and cold like don't introspect when you are in your feelings and you want to take a step back like think about your actions and how that isn't giving someone security and and the faith and the trust that they can continue on a connection with you because this person wants love okay this is something that they want i just feel like they're I don't want to say their motives behind it, but I feel like what's deep down within there, within them, it doesn't inspire healthy love or healthy connections, even though that's what they truly want. They're holding on to too much and they need to learn how to give some of this up. It's just like the feeling of someone who... It's like someone who just feels like they just will never get what they want. They feel like they'll never get what they want. So even when faced with the opportunity to get what they want, they just have an inability to actually get what it is that they want. Because even here, it's like 
the emperor is like a very assertive person. Like this is someone who has no issues with going after what it is that they want. They have no issues with that. They, but you know, the emperor also has the ability to create some type of structure, discipline and order. And it's like, I just think that this is a facade that this person shows, you know, they show up as, oh, this is who I am. This is who I am. But deep down inside, it's like they're just holding on to so much. I don't even think they really have a good grip and sense on who they are as people because they keep blocking and stopping themselves from things that they want. And I just feel like if you love yourself, that's an act of self-love is to give yourself what it is that you want. That's what I think. So if you want a healthy connection, then you have to address why you're showing up, how you're showing up. Like it's okay to have passion here. It's okay that they want to be intimate with you. That's how they feel. It's okay that they can be so inspired by you and just want to be with you. That's okay. But it's like this person has to convince themselves that it's okay, that it's safe for them to do that. And they just don't feel safe. Like I told you, they're a very insecure lover. Very insecure. Even here with the death, it's all about death card. It's, it's another aspect about it as well is just being able to let go of what doesn't serve you, okay? And it's about being able to confront these endings without any fear. And I think that this person is still living in a place of fear, okay? They're still living in a place of fear to where they can't even get to, like, let's say, um, a judgment moment where they're able to look back at their past actions and are able to take accountability. Like this person hasn't yet taken accountability for how they show, they've shown up. They're too afraid to even look and see what it is or to address their behavior. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's, you know, if this is someone that you want to deal with. Like I said, it's a lot of challenges and it's a lot of uncertainty, even here with the moon. Like this is an uncertain lover. And this is also bringing up the aspect again of fear. OK. This person that you have on your mind could also be a cancer. So, yeah, it's just a lot of illusions and confusion that you would have to stick around for just to understand how this person feels and their emotions. Like you would have to be OK with getting into the chariot energy of navigating challenges because you're going to be navigating a lot of fear uncertainty and mystery with this person because they keep a lot to themselves it's a lot beneath the surface they have to give themselves the ability to open up and to understand so if this is something that you feel like you have the patience to deal with like you know how to treat them because i mean for real for real you can kind of just take this person as they come and just be like okay that person's gone like all right Take this person as they come and when they're gone, they're gone. You just know how to deal with them. Focus on something else in your life until they come back and show up again. But I know for others, y'all might be like, I don't do that in and out. <laughs> you're either in or you're out. Y'all know when it was summertime and you would be coming in and out the house and what would your parent or guardian tell you? Stop letting all the good air out. You either coming in or you going out. You need to choose, you know? So some of y'all may not like that one fit in, one fit out type of thing. You may not like that. Others of y'all, you might just, you just know how to deal with that person. You know how to deal with them. Like, I see you when I see you. <laughs> I see you when I see you type of thing that they have going on. But yeah, we have here with the hanged man, okay, to be continued. <laughs> So maybe some of y'all are fine. You're fine with that. I mean, oftentimes, even with Scorpio, it'll talk a lot about like, you know, exes. You could potentially be asking about an ex, somebody that you've already encountered, you've already dealt with. I feel like you already know how this person's behavior is. Maybe I'm just giving you some more information on how it's playing out, you know, because you know what you're experiencing, but there's also deeper levels to this as well, you know, even deeper levels that this person is trying to hide. They don't want to address, but hey, we have to be continued here. So <laughs> maybe this is a process that is, this is a process, a relationship that is still unfolding, okay? But even here with death, like it's not necessarily bad when it comes to relationships. It could also just be talking about a transition, you know? And then even here, when I see the lovers, it makes me think about choices. So it's like this person has to be faced with 
with the choice here. You know, either they're going to transform the connection or if it stays how it stays, then, you know, it'll be on you to decide what to do. But yeah, this individual could also be very inactive as well. But I'm picking that up even here with them going into the hermit energy. And then even here with the eight of swords, that's a very in, like imprisoned type of way to be. Okay, it's like a mental imprisonment. Physically, it could be somebody literally being in jail, in prison. But, um, I mean, I give it to this person because they have to think, okay? I just think that the important thing for them is to think their way into a solution, to be more solution-based as opposed to thinking their way in circles. Because when you see here, this also looks like a cycle, a circle, like, you know, things are still kind of playing out. But yeah, they could be a very inactive um, lover, you know, someone that just, it takes a lot to compel them to move. But when they move, they're moving. I think there a lot of the reasons why they move is because of how passionate they are, how attracted to someone that they are, how sexually attracted to someone that they are. That'll get them moving. Okay. That'll get them moving. So yeah, this person's kind of like a rock at times. It's just like a really big rock that's heavy. And you just can't push it. You can't move it as much as you want to sway it this way. It like, it won't go anywhere. It just stays right there. <laughs> it stays right there. I hope this person is able to open up soon because if they open up, it'll be like night and day with this individual. They're really like night and day. Like this person would really show you their hand. I just think they have to be comfortable enough with being vulnerable, but they would show you their hand. They would show you love. I'm picking up a lot of cancer energy here as well. They could be a cancer, like just mad sensitive. So I think this person on your mind, they're a sensitive lover. They're so sensitive and intense. It's crazy. Like they got a lot going on here with their emotions and it's not a bad thing. I just wish that this person would truly show up in this emperor energy and make it make sense. So it makes sense not only for them, for but for you, for a connection. Even if you don't decide that you want to move forward with this person, it's like if they want love, there's adjustments that they're going to have to make to how they give love. There's adjustments that need to be made so that they can have what they actually truly want. They can transform into something better. But um, let's go ahead and move on to the archetypes and we're gonna get some more information about the type of lover that they are okay so here we have father we have father and you know, the emperor definitely does give me like a father type of energy, okay? It gives me a father type of vibe. We have here in the light attributes, talent for creating and supporting life, positive guiding light with a tribal unit. So, like I said, they definitely do show up very masculine. I think this is a man that you asking about, <laughs> okay? They showing up very masculine here and... I was picking up that anyway, as far as like with them being in a place to where they can actually show their hand, like this could actually be a very supporting person, you know, a very loving person, someone that could actually listen to you, someone that you could feel comfortable opening up to. But as far as the inconsistencies and their temperament, that hot and cold in and out behavior, it, inspire, it inspires um, more so of a mistrust or distrust as opposed to trusting this individual. So let's see it's just like this person has so much potential but i don't know they have so much potential they also have virgin and the light attributes maintaining symbolic purity of heart and spirit so I feel bad for this individual. I don't think that there's someone that does things to strategically hurt other people. I just feel like this is a part of their own um, 
victimhood or whatever they've experienced. I think that's what's going on with this individual. So I, it has to do with past events or it just, I, I don't believe that your connection with this person has now put them in the eight of swords, you know, like the eight of swords are some deep seated beliefs. Even here with the moon, these are deep seated beliefs that someone has had that is actively holding them back in life. So it's just so sad because deep down, look, maintaining symbolic purity of heart and spirit, like this person could be a very innocent person, but they may just have experienced a lot of toxicities when it comes to love, just being in codependent connections or even being in abusive connections with people. But yeah, like you don't ever have to question or deny, does this person want you? They're very obsessed. They're an obsessive lover. They think about you. They think about connections. They think about these relationships all the time. We also have here addict. So that kind of is connected here to the devil energy, which we'll talk about addictions and codependencies. We have here helps you recognize and confront addictive behavior. So the one thing I will say about them is, is like... <laughs> Whatever they're experiencing, like you can learn from this, you know, you can learn from this and you can understand like, okay, well, why am I attracted to this person? Like, what is it about them? I think that you sense the goodness and the innocence that's within them. And you sense that they actually could be very caring. I think that's how this person is. Like, I really do think that when you're around them or they just make you feel so special, like there's just such a, a big intensity where it's like, it's you, it's you, it's you. But you may not trust it because when you're not there, you're out of sight and out of mind. And they could be doing this with other people. But yeah, they definitely do make it seem like it's all about you. So if anything, I do believe that this could just be a mirror into you understanding maybe more about yourself. You know, why are you connected to this person? You know, what what about you? What about them makes you want to be connected to them? Like, what is it that they're showing you? And, you know, you might have to transcend those things to free yourself. But if you want to be here, you know how to deal with this person and you love them, then it's on you. If you see that goodness that's within them, if they're able to, you know, uh, surpass these mental hoops and gymnastics that they're putting themselves through, like tricking themselves out of a good thing, if they're able to surpass that, then, you know, maybe that's something that you all could work through. But let's go ahead and move on to the hip hop queens and also the dark mirror oracle. So we're going to be getting another, you know, well, a light aspect about them and then also a shadow aspect about them and the type of lover that they are. So we have here defense. We have here defense, which I mean, it's not a bad thing. I just think that this is someone who they're they're so sensitive and insecure. So so where it's like, OK, defense is not a bad thing, but this person is pretty much going to stand up for themselves. They are. I think that if you push too much on trying to get answers out of this person, then they could come off as very defensive, like in the seven of wands energy, like leave me alone. I want to be by myself. Stop going back and forth with me. Like, you know, that type of individual. But how it plays out as far as for others is like, even here with the emperor energy, like this is a, a protective type of energy, even there with the father. So it seems as though this person would, and they have the energy too, okay? I feel like this person got hands, like they know how to fight. You know, this is a very athletic and energetic person. I feel like this is someone who would physically defend you, especially against other people. I think they are so intensely passionate about you and they're so obsessed. Like they would literally fight the world. So it's just like, I don't know. It's like this person really knows how they feel, but then they try to go back on it. And I think it's just weird because they're putting themselves through these mood swings in a sense. They're putting themselves through these mood swings. But yeah, what I would say is, is when they want to be recluse, just let them go. Like, you want to go be by yourself? Okay. You need space? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You just have to be secure in understanding that regardless of what they're doing in that space, that you got to put yourself first. Okay? Put yourself first. 
because the energy will not lie, okay? <laughs> the energy will not lie. So you're going to know when it's time to go. Others, y'all might feel like it's time to go right now. You don't want to put up with it. It's up to you, but you're going to know when it's time to go. That's all I'm going to say. So let's go to the Dark Mirror Oracle. <laughs> I feel like I've brought up so many shadow aspects to them, but it's just like this person is here and there. Like there are positives about them. They're doing pretty well for themselves. There are positives like... They'll show you that they want you. There are positives. But at the same time, this is someone, it's easy for them to want to leave. It's easy for them to ghost. Like, it's easy for them to do that. And I, I just don't like that. So shadow aspect about them is we have fragmentation. Yeah, I don't like the aspect of, of compartmentalization with this person. They definitely have issues with compartmentalizing themselves. So it's like the reason why it's so easy for you to be like out of sight, out of mind is because they will compartmentalize you in their head. They don't see it as oh, a relationship could be a continuum. Like, oh, let's continue to get to know each other. Let's talk to each other frequently. Let's communicate with each other. They don't see it like that. They don't see it like that. They just, it's kind of just like you're watching a TV show and you pause the TV show and let's say you close the app, all right? And then you go do something else with your life. And then two weeks later, you come back to the TV show and you pick up right where you left off. It's like, that's kind of what that person does with relationships because they compartmentalize you. So that's why it's so easy for you to be out of sight and out of mind. They're very fragmented in their mind when they think about that. And I don't think that works for them. I don't think it works for them because it ends up um, putting them through too much like mental stress because of that. Like, that's what they do. They compartmentalize you as a defense or coping mechanism or strategy to deal with all of these things they have going on in their head and their lack of, uh, of security and their lack of, of, of feeling like they deserve love or, or they deserve what they actually really truly want, which is a compatible, loving connection with someone where there's there's love, but they also have this aspect of you know, this sexual attraction and this primal lust that they have. So this person knows, they could know that they love you, but the way in which they show that love is just, like I said, very inconsistent. So yeah, they're very fragmented. It's kind of like there's pieces of themselves all over and they have to like regain all of those aspects of themselves I feel like this person has been taken advantage of by other people. People have just taken from them without like necessarily replenishing. They've just been taken from. So they're kind of like depleted. They feel like their heart is over there. Their head is over somewhere else. Like, yeah, this person is just not really secure in life right now. They're not really secure in themselves. They have some intense work that they need to do. They really do to get themselves back together, to feel like a whole person. There's someone who's able to go with the motions on a, the motions of life on the outside looking in. You're like, okay, this is a promising young man. Or if this is a woman you're asking about, it's heavy masculine energy, but hey, if it's a woman you're asking about, it's like, okay, this is a promising young woman. Okay, okay. But then you get to know them and you see that everything's not adding up. But yeah, this is definitely someone who has the ability to compartmentalize you. Like, that's why it's so easy for them to be like out of sight and out of mind. They need to they need to learn how to let go of things that don't serve them anymore. That's what they need to learn how to let go of. And they also need to be okay with connection and vulnerability, understanding that this is the best way that you're going to be able to inspire that intimacy and closeness that you really want is through vulnerability getting to know someone opening up showing your hand like 
they have the capacity to do that. I just think this person been hurt. They've been taken advantage of, especially with them being in this virgin energy of, you know, um, symbolic purity of heart and spirit. They've been taken advantage of. And they could have even been taken advantage of, you know, just as children as well. So their sense of self isn't all the way there, but they can get it there. And I split the deck, the child I was meant to be. Yeah, it's like this person has to reparent themselves, you know, so there could be some intense like parental wounds with abandonment that's going on here. You know, someone leaving them and feeling like that person left with their heart or something. Experiencing loss. So, yeah, y'all. All right, let's go ahead. Let's move on to the wisdom of the oracle. And because I just feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> this reading is probably going to be like an hour. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> just looking at my 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 uh camera it's like yeah this drawing is going on and on and on and on but hey it is what it is all right so um the the wisdom of the oracles basically i'm using this for like okay how they show up in relationships so we have here the fates which is definitely interesting we have here the fates yeah i feel bad for this person like i, I feel more so I guess, empathy or sympathy. I guess that's what I'm trying to say for this individual. But yeah, they just wish for a lot. They hope for a lot. I feel like they know what they want, which is a healthy love. They feel like they could be fated to get it. But for some reason, I mean, it's their own doing. They're just not able to. I think something that they're trying to resolve is like maybe they can't change. You know, that's something that they're trying to resolve within themselves. It's like, okay, maybe I can't change. Like, yes, I want this connection. Yes, I want this healthy thing, but maybe I can't change. Maybe I can't have what it is that I want. But that's kind of sad. That's kind of sad because I feel like There, there is the possibility of change. It's just, it's just that person just has to want it. You know, this person on your mind just has to want it. We also have here unfinished symphony. We have here unfinished symphony. So I think that this individual gets into a lot of connections that never really wrap up. <laughs> you know, they just rush into a lot of connections and then they rush out of those connections as well. So there's, it never really gives it enough time to, develop so they may feel as though a connection could be faded like oh they met the right person for them like at the right time but they don't have enough ability to allow the connection to just develop and just go on and just let's let's just see what happens let's see what happens it's like this person puts 10 on two it's like they want so much they want so much but then they're well they're ready to leave when it becomes so intense, it's like you're running away from something that you want, something that you are inspiring, something that you are initiating. You're running away from that. So, yeah, with connections, they never really give them the appropriate time to really, truly develop. On the bottom of the deck, we see time to go. So this person's a runner, track star. OK, <laughs> he's a runner. He's a track star or she's a runner. She's a track star. <laughs> she gonna run away when it gets hard okay <laughs> yo i'm so done like i'm so done with myself but yeah this person is giving runner so what i would say is don't chase okay don't chase it's up to you if you're gonna let it be a revolving door in your life that's 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 your prerogative but don't chase like don't nobody got time to be chasing after this person back and forth you need to show up and stand up for what you started and what you want all right, so I'm going to get y'all one music oracle. And this, I like using these cards to kind of like describe the person's attitude, you know. Or they could even be described, like used to describe your attitude. But in this case, we're focusing on them, okay? We're focusing on them. Let me know if y'all want me to do a, what type of lover are you? I think 
think that's good. I think it makes sense for me to do the flip side, right? I think it makes sense for me to do the flip side, okay? So for this person, they got John Lennon. <laughs> not everything you see is a mirage. Not everything you hear is a lie. So I'm not saying this person is trying to gaslight you. I I think that this person is a very much it is what it is type of individual. I think that if you have a actual conversation with them, they may be willing to tell you what is going on. But I feel like it's to an extent. I think this person could also be concerned with keeping up appearances here as well. So, I mean, I guess it's good that you're here, <laughs> you know, so you could get some more information about this person. But I think that what they're trying to tell you is like, okay, yeah, they're not actually lying. Like I said, they actually do feel intense emotions for you. They really do. Like this person just wants to <laughs> just be around you they want to be in your aura they want to be in your energy they just want to be there like okay cool that's not a lie but when they go back and forth and hot and cold it makes it seem like they're lying because they're inconsistent lover if you enjoy wasting time then it isn't wasted so <laughs> hey this person's aware you know they're aware and they don't see it as you know, they're wasting time. You feel like they could be wasting your time by doing all of this, but I don't think this person sees it as wasting time. I just think that this is how they are. You know, they need to come to those conclusions that they are wasting time because the connection could be a lot much more productive. And then we have here, peace is the only thing worth hoping for. <laughs> so I think that's also the thing about it that might still keep you open to this person even though they're dealing with so much is like just how like cool and calm that they may seem you know how cool and calm that they are but don't be fooled it's a lot going on beneath the surface that's probably an aspect of it is like you know you get along with this person and things are cool and stuff but I would just say like focus on how you feel when they're not around. Don't just focus on how you feel when they're energetic and enthusiastic and in your face. Like think about how you feel when they're recluse and when they act like they're dissatisfied and they act like there's something else out there and they act like, you know, they're just so stuck and they're being non-active. It's like you have to focus on that as well and then just come to your decision with what you want to do. But I'm going to leave this here. I feel like I've analyzed this person enough for today. <laughs> if you enjoyed this reading, go ahead and let me know. I hope that this reading was also able to help you decide what you want to do. If this is someone you want to continue with, even though I do see some cap compatibility here, but you know we have some other challenges here as well. This is something that you want to deal with. It's definitely your prerogative. You know what's best for you, but yeah. Like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, be blessed, fam. And I will see y'all in the next one.